David Ignatius, please here. help me okay. here. In your latest piece for the Washington Post, you offer the White House a suggestion for cooling down rising tensions with China, writing in part, quote, there are different ways of showing presidential courage. One is getting on a train to visit Kiev in the middle of a war. Another is picking up the phone and calling Xi Jinping at a time of sharply deteriorating U.S.-China relations. Reaching out to the Chinese leader wouldn't win President Biden popularity points at home, and it would give Republicans a talking point they would undoubtedly exploit. But it's the right thing to do, regardless of the politics. The current focus of tension involves the U.S. intelligence reporting that China might supply Russia with ammunition to sustain its flagging war with Ukraine. Officials tell me that China hasn't sent the weapons yet. If it does, Biden will have to take sharp countermeasures. That's why Biden should make that call to Beijing now. Yeah, you know, David, um, first of all, it doesn't really matter. Republicans are going to criticize Joe Biden if you wear what I mean, and he doesn't care based on the color of his tie. So who gives a damn about what Republicans say? Uh, we're worried about. America and what's best for America. Uh, and it seems to me if we could talk to the Soviet Union uh, during the Cold War, we should be talking to China, especially with all of the range of issues coming up. I want you to talk about that and also really quickly, a heartening Washington Post editorial on the first China, the bipartisan China committee uh, that um, I'm sorry, I forget who, who's running it right now, but we need to get his name. Mike, Mike uh, Gallagher. Mike Gallagher, uh, it, it, they're doing it right. They understand the threat coming from China and really seem to be doing it right. We can do two things at once, right, David? So I think that puts it exactly right. Uh, Mike Gallagher is an outstanding uh, legislator. Um, he's leading a genuine bipartisan effort. The one thing that you find agreement among Republicans and Democrats in Washington about these days is, is China, that China is becoming an increasing competitive threat. We've got that. And, and I, as you say, I think that's, that's a good thing. I worry that in this climate where bashing China is just the, the best politics there is, that the president may be checked from doing what's necessary at a time when the U.S.-China relationship really is deteriorating in ways that are harmful to our country, uh, also to, to China, but we worry about, it, about the United States. Uh, and I, I was struck when uh, Biden made his now famous trip to Kyiv about what he really represents in the public mind in the United States and around the world. He's, he, he is this mature, statesman-like person uh, who has the courage to go to a place that's under fire and, and do the right thing, embrace uh, a leader, President Zelensky, who is fighting with his country for, for things that we believe. Doing the right thing in, 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 in American politics often is uh, it's, it's complicated. And for Biden to reach out to China and say, let's talk about our relationship, let's talk about what's going wrong, would be very unpopular with, with, with House Republicans, Republicans generally. He ought to do it anyway. And the reason is mm. he is the steward of our, of our country's interests at a time when this confrontation with China is beginning to be uh, something that I think is going to be costly to us down, down the road. We worry so much about appearing weak t uh, towards China, we forget we have vastly more military power than all of our adversaries combined. I mean, the level of right. American military strength, I travel around the world with our military, it's just overwhelming. It knocks you out. So I, I think we, we ought to realize how, how powerful we are. There was a hope that, that Secretary Blinken would be in Beijing around now, talking with the Chinese leadership. The Chinese wanted that. That got blown up by this crazy balloon incident. But I think there's a way, starting with the president, to put this back on track. It'll be a good thing. That's the, the purpose of this article is basically let's do the simple, direct, right thing, because that's Joe Biden's brand. Well, I, I just couldn't agree more. And, you know, there are a lot of people, including some uh, that we played in clips at the top of the show, who said that they would prefer our military to be more like the Russian military. That tells you all you need to know about them, Jonathan Lemire. Uh, and David is exactly right. What, what, do we, what do we have to worry about looking weak? We've got the strongest military relative to the rest of the world and at any time in, in the history of the world. We, we are strong. We're powerful. Uh, we're we're 
uh, we're capable of, of, of doing just about whatever we want to do as a nation, our president can pick up the phone and, and start an active dialogue with the leader of China. Not because it's in China's best interest, but because it's in our best interest to try to do everything we can do to avert the next crisis. And by the way, the global economy depends on the United States and China figuring out like how to work together. Environmental issues, the same. Military, strategic conflicts, they're, they're averted uh, are a better chance of being averted if we're talking to each other. Yeah, and let's recall, of course, that their conversation between the two governments ceased for a while last year in the wake of Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, but restored mm. when President Biden and President Xi Jinping met on the sidelines of the G20 in Bali. And there had been hope there for the return to a constructive uh, <clears throat> dialogue. But recent events have certainly strained things again. Uh, the, the spy balloon, of course, these bellicose warnings from the U.S. Is telling the world, hey, we believe China might be considering sending lethal aid to Moscow, though I spoke to a senior U.S. official last night who says they've seen no evidence that that's happened yet. But to the point of tension, uh, just now, the G20 foreign ministers meeting, Beijing signed on with Moscow, blasting uh, the U.S. warnings to them. Uh, but we also, to David's point, uh, have some a little bit of news right now about the power of talking uh, to each other. Secretary of State Blinken just had his first conversation with Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, in months uh, at the G20. Wow. A state, a state just happened now. It's about a 10-minute conversation. A state.